Hi everyone, it's Helen here. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tutorial. So I'm really excited about this one. This has been on my list to make for a very long time and I'm finally getting around to making it today. So today we're going to be making an A5 ring binder. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to pop those in and everything else. And we're going to be finishing off with a wreath. And I have some A4 uh, chipboard here. This is one millimetre thick and Everything that I'm using today will be listed down below because I will get questions. And I have created a free download for you and the link for this will be down below. Now this is under the Helen Griffin um, part. It's not part of the uh, Simply May Crafts. This is purely from me. And uh, that will be linked down below. And let's jump straight in. So we're going to be cutting our chipboard I have a link or a video down below that I'll also put pot down for you on how to cut your chipboard really easily I think it's three ways I'm going to be using my Fiskars bypass trimmer here just because it really does work extremely well so here um, is the first measurement six and three quarters by nine and a quarter and then the binder the, the binder the spine piece is one inch by nine and a quarter so let's cut the last piece so always cut it um in the orientation of the book so that you can get your binding piece spine piece out of the same cut so if i cut in straight away on the other way i may not have enough space to cut out my spine so we're going to cut this at six and three quarters now this bypass trimmer is a self-sharpening rotary blade thingy bobby and it cuts straight through that chipboard and then I can literally go to a thin piece of paper let me just grab something here it's a thin piece of paper that I've printed on let's just do a little slither and I can go straight to cutting a thin piece of paper no fraying I've had this in my stash you've seen me use it year after year and it hasn't blunted I absolutely love this one and the other measurement is nine and a quarter and I'll make sure that all the measurements are down below and this will also be featuring on my website as well okay so I should have all of my pieces now so let's start working on our wrap we're going to be doing a wrapped cover today I love my wrapped covers it's literally just like making a mini album wrap and I'm going to be using some double-sided tape for this. Let's go for this thick stuff here. I've, I've almost run out of this. So what we're going to do is that this has snowflakes on either side. So it will print out like this. And the paper cardstock that I've printed out this out on, I will list that down below as well. We're going to join it together with all of the lovely snowflakes on the inside. So this will be the spine part and it will be wrapped around. And that will look so nice, I think she says she thinks I'm sure it will look lovely okay so let's add some tape just here you can use thinner stuff if you have that I really need to degunk these it's just one of those jobs okay so bone folder push this red tape backing right into the cardstock and that will get rid of all of the air bubbles and it will push all of the adhesive right into the fibers then we can take this off and then we can join this together you can just overlap them see i have these funny areas here where i can quite easily line everything up and i don't mind this part here being right in the center of the spine and then press that down use your bone folder and press that down okay turn over and there we have our wrapped cardstock so just a quick uh, dry run i'm going to pop that in the middle now this is the type of wrap i would also make for my mini albums as well so this is pretty much the same though although we'll be finishing it off differently and then this will go on like that and there's just enough room to uh, wrap um, our edges over on this side it will be a little bit um, on the thinner side 
but that should all fit. I'm hoping you can see it's quite bright in here. Okay, so to help us reinforce the bendable area, which is this area here, I'm going to add some reinforcing paper. And just as a quick example here, this is what it does. You can't rip it or tear it. It gives it great strength when you're opening and closing, but you can cut it and you can ink it. So it's really durable. And this is what it looks like when it's inside the album. It's just visible there, but then when we cover all of this up, it's going to be hidden. Okay, so I'm just trimming this reinforcing paper down to four inches by nine and a quarter, which is the height of our chipboard. And I keep all of these scraps in the bag. Okay, so you can either cover this all in red tape. I'm just going to use glue, but advisable, use the red tape. I'm going to be using today the book binding glue. I've been getting on quite well with this so it dries nicely, it dries fast if you put a lot on there like with any glue it will take longer to dry and the bottle is really really nice to hold and use as well so definitely a lot easier to use than um, I do love the Cosmic Shimmer but it's a flat bottle this one is nice and round and I pretty much get the same performance out of everything from this one too Right, so pop that on. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is just add a bit of tape just to the edge of these chipboards, just on one side. Okay, so I've got everything stuck down now. Don't forget to push that in with your bone folder. And you can actually do this by eye for many, many, many years. I did exactly the same, just doing it by eye. And I, I got actually really good at it. But I do have this toolkit here that makes it so much easier. It comes with all of the tools that we're going to be needing to finish this album. I love this stuff. So this really speeds up and using any sort of tool or gadget really does become quite a bit of fun. So take off that side. I have here the T-bar spacer, which I'm going to pop on the left hand side here, like up against the, um, the chipboard uh, spine piece. And then we're going to pop this on. This will be our spacer. There we go, that gives us the perfect amount of space. And then swap it over to the other side. Okay, let's pop on the next one. And that makes it so much easier. There we go, I know I've got all of the right gaps in there now. Okay, so we just need to glue down these flaps here. You can if you want to, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue. It's not that important because it's all going to be wrapped and this isn't um, this part here isn't a fundamental part of the uh, album construction either. So we just glue those flaps down. There we go. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab myself some double-sided tape. I've used this for years and years and years. I will link this down below. It's from Amazon. I'm going to use the squeegee tool that comes with the toolkit and then tear that. And I'm going to do the bottom. So I've done the top. I'm going to do the bottom now. So I'm what I really want with this is edge to edge coverage. Okay, I've got a little tiny gap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my squeegee again, push all that down, remove this one. Then I'm going to glue some more on the top. an easy way there of overlapping if you run out of space. Okay, grab your tool again, your squeegee tool, and press everything into the fibres. Now, the, um, the fibres that on this chipboard can be quite fibrous. 
so it's really good just to push these in as much as you can okay so let's take all of the backings off and again you can recycle all of these backing papers that you peel off right i'm just going to do a quick dry run before i turn it over and stick it so grab yourself your prepped cardstock for wrapping there we go and i'm just going to pop this down just so that from i i know what i'm doing i can see where i'm going this has a grain to it obviously because it's wood so i want all of these straight which means i want to have my board on straight as well so this is where this tool can come in handy and i know i need to go off there a little bit more and i'm lining this up at the bottom so i can get that on as straight as possible i'm going to do a quick dry run so i know what i'm doing i'm holding this in place i need to move over a little bit more keeping the bottom straight yep i'm happy with that so i'm going to turn it over and then press that down now this tool makes this bit so much easier there we go and then i'm just going to turn this over grab a pencil or if you just want to go straight to a craft knife you can do I'm just going to turn this over the other way and then i'm just going to cut this out now ideally i would have a larger area here to do the wrapping but we will do our best on that and i'm definitely going to use some red tape and glue together because the shorter the edges are when you wrap them over the more likely it is that it wants to unwrap okay so i'm just going to grab my bone folder now and i'm going to just make some new creases this is going to help our paper fold all the way around Okay, red tape again. I'm going to go all the way around the perimeter. Okay, press everything down again. I'm just going to grab a cutting mat now for the next bit here and then we're going to be moving on to our corner tool and grab yourself a craft knife and then we are just going to pop this onto the corner it has this indent here so it holds on and stops in the right place and then along this thick edge here it's a very chunky edge we can then trim off our corner and that is what we need there to wrap our corner whoops without um, having an exposed corner okay one thing i usually do before i cut as well is i just add my tape and then uh, i lose a little bit off the edge there but it just means that i have edge to edge as well so if you want to see me do this again whilst I'm making a mini album, there are plenty of these on my channel. I will leave the best one linked down below. I don't think I'll be wearing this nail varnish anymore because it's all coming off on my paper. So um, yeah, thumbs down for that one. It's fine though because it's all going to be on the inside and normally i would also put in uh the tape here on the edge here but this is so tiny so it's not going to matter so before we actually take any of the backings off we are just going to fold this up this is really going to help us when we um wrap everything and again these tiny little areas this little slim piece here is really going to need our help to wrap over and then the cover that we pop on here i want to get it as close to the edge as possible with hardly any border alternatively you can actually just print off 
another sheet of card and um, just extend it slightly. Okay, so let's remove all of our backings. As you can see, these are coming off super easy because we've pressed everything down. Really helps getting the backings off. Okay, glue time. So if you've ever done woodwork and you use nails and glue, well then this is the same sort of thing. The nails part will be the double-sided tape, holds things in place, and the glue is there to make sure that it stays there long term. Okay, let's so add glue all the way along there and all along the top here as well. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle here and fold it over and then work our way over to the edge on each side and press that down. Bone folder again, give that a good push down, push that right into the fibres, get that really good burnish. I can see now where I've burnished and pressed. Okay, and as with any sort of wrapping, you do one side, you always work on the opposite. That's the same if you're wrapping a canvas for a, um, for a frame for painting or wrapping fabric around something for upholstery, you always work on the opposite edge. Okay, bone folder again. This this bit here we kept wanting to pop up, but now I've I've told it what I want it to do. Okay, now for the super tricky bit. Again, I don't normally have gaps or a strip this slim for wrapping. I really don't. So I'm gonna do my best. So we have here these corners. So all we have to do with our bone folder is just fold them inwards and flatten them just like that so they kind of disappear so that when we wrap them they're on the inside and the same on this side too okay I'm going to use glue again because I really don't want this budging after we've glued it down and if any glue comes out from the edges I'm fine with that as well we can wipe that off okay so let's Fold that over. And then give that a really good press. And this is looking good because I can see the glue coming out from underneath. That is going to help support this tiny little bit of card here on the inside. There we go. I'm pretty confident that is very well and nicely glued down. Right, do the same on the other side, fold in the corners. Okay, and that is how you make your wrapped cover with really nice corners. I'm really pleased with how that has turned out. I've got the snowflakes on the spine, so now it's time to carry on working in the centre on the inside cover okay so this is optional i have here in my stash some red a3 cardstock so i'm just going to cut this down to the size i need and my ruler is not very uh it's not going to be long enough for this so let's get the tape measure out yes i have one of these lying about in most rooms actually because i do get random thoughts and i think oh i wonder what that would look like if I had that there or oh, would this piece of furniture that I fancy fit here so my mind just goes <laughs> funny and I need a tape measure so that's 15 inches by 9 inches so if you have A4 just uh, divide the 15 inches by 2 and then cut 2 of those out 
So okay, so I've got that cut out and that fits really nicely. So let's get that glued down. I'm also going to be using a lot more of that tape as well. So grab the red tape. We're gonna add some reinforcing areas to these parts here because as these fold up and um, close, you can have lifting here. So these are the areas that I want stuck down super well. So I'm going to go across here, not all the way down to the bottom because it will be exposed then from underneath the red cover. So I'm going to go to about here and then trim that. Okay, I've got them all over the edge now. So press those in and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add double-sided tape to the entire piece here I have gone over the edge there I think oh no I think I got away with it okay press everything down I did that joining gap thing again by removing one of the layers okay remove all of your backings Okay, book binding glue again, and I'm just going to go around the perimeter. Okay, I'm just quickly taking off these strips here. Okay, it's slightly wonky, but I'm committed now, and I should be okay with that. Okay, not bad for first try. Okay. Press that down. If you have your squeegee tool and haven't lost it, use that. If not, use a ruler. I'll find it when I tidy up. And then press everything down. Squish it all in. And then we're ready now to start folding. So again, this is really good to have one of these rulers. This is the Tim Holtz one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift that up slightly. You can see here it's wanting to bubble, but we can reinforce that by, with a, by pressing with our ruler as we lift this up just like so and then we can grab our bone folder and press down same on the other side this is the place here where it just wants to lift up that's why we added all of the extra tape just here and now we've pu we're pushing everything in it should all be sticking and staying in the right place. There we go. So now we've got to do the same on the other side. And so what I would do is I would come back a day later and just check the edges here. And if you do have any lifting of any sort, just get in there with a little bit of glue, give it another press and then give that another day and then check it again. And that should have fixed the problem if you do have any remaining bits that were lifting. Okay, so that is our folder wrap pretty much done now I absolutely love that it's going to look great with the wreath on the front but we, we still need to finish off the inside so I have here an A5 binder piece sorry I'm just thinking thinking and talking do not go well together so Grab yourself a pencil. Now I've designed this for this to go here and still have enough space for your A5 paper and for this to close over the top, if that makes sense. So it will look like that from the inside, just like so. If you want to, you can just pop it here and you'll have lots of extra space then as well 
to add extra index tabs and bulky things on the edge it all depends on what look that you're going for okay but i'm going to go for this one this is going to close over the top so grab yourself a pencil i need to bring this down so i can see and then i'll bring it back up again i have this more or less as straight and as level as possible if this goes in wonky then your pages will be wonky too it's a bit like when you're just making them in the album this is the bit here that sets how straight or how wonky your pages are so i take my pencil i'm going to make myself some holes here just like that okay so i would recommend using a cropper towel i've had this since 2006 however my holes are too far in for me to use this so i'm going to show you another way because not everyone will have one of these Okay, so I'm going to grab myself a pokey tool or if you have an awl or something like that poke yourself a hole all the way through and then we need to make it slightly larger so we can kind of poke around the hole to make it bigger Okay, so I've got my first hole in there and I've just tested it with the screw part. So we have the screw here and that goes into this section here. You can get these that come with a grommet sort of attachment thing where you need a grommet and a, and a hammer and things to bash it in. But I prefer the screw option, it's a lot quieter. So we're going to just do the next one and I've worked out that you need to go in from this side. So I just need to poke a few more holes in to make it a little bit bigger. And the biro that I used or a pencil will work just fine. Okay, so grab yourself these ones so the screw ones have kind of like a, a screw end and then this attaches through here and then we can get the screw bit and then put that in Now I will probably have to go get myself a screwdriver just to tighten that up. I definitely don't want to be improvising with any other tools with that. So I am going to go grab one of Mr G's screwdrivers. I got caught. <laughs> he only let me use them as he knew that I was using it with a screw. Anyway. I bought in these for uh, Christmas last year. I didn't realise these were magnetic tips. Okay, I hope he'll put that back. <laughs> okay, so here we have our ring binder accessory attached i love that i've really enjoyed making this i really have i have really enjoyed making this and i'm looking forward to getting this filled in so i've got my little test sheet here i had this weird mark so i just thought i'd use that one instead of one of my projects just to test this out let me close that and there we have our page that is really lovely and if you want to see me um decorate this I have loads of ideas on what I could put in here. Let me know. I can even use some of my mini album die sets and use the pockets from those as well. So I think that'll be a lovely little extra thing there to do. Let's uh, fix the pen I broke. Right, now for the front cover. I've had my glue gun heating up. So we're going to be adding a wreath so let's make our wreath this is just from amazon i'll make sure this is linked down below as well so we're just going to 
pop that on, ruffle up the leaves because they do get a bit flattened. Nope, no, those aren't my Tim Holtz. Those are pinking shears. Here we go. Right, so this is on a wire and these Tim Holtz scissors will cut through that really nicely. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to bend this around because it's wire. You can just make yourself a little wreath just like that. And then pop that on. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that really festive? And again, not even for Christmas. You could, if you don't have the snowflakes and did another wood grain and had this wreath, you can decorate it for spring, for Easter. You can add flowers, um, weddings, you know, forest holidays. And you want to, you know, do the photographs of your holiday in there. It's going to be absolutely perfect for loads of different occasions. So let's pop some glue just strategically just in four places here okay so I have some numbers here from the number dies I will list these down below as well these have the numbers and also the special day have the larger numbers too so let's add those and there we have our finished album. So I've added on my numbers. Uh, what did I use? I used the alphabet die set and then I've added the Merry Christmas here. This is from the Christmas words die set. Okay, so I can't wait to carry on adding to this. I'm thinking maybe some uh, metal corners here would look good. Something here, a hook or something there to um, add things on tassels and bells and oh yes yeah, and bells would look really good on that i have something that i can do for that one so I'll, I'll add that on as well but if you want this to be a continued thing let me know in the comments and then we can do some more decorating and adding our pages on the inside so if you like this one give me a thumbs up if you don't want to miss any of the um next episodes for this one or um any of my other christmas projects that are coming up then please subscribe in the corner by clicking that icon and um, everything that i've used today will be down below but if you have any questions let me know and i'll see you again next time thank you for joining me today